For any organization to work at its optimum, get the best out of its workforce, money is key. You see, money is for capital and recurrent expenditure, but the money must first be sourced, controlled, managed, and accounted for. This responsibility in the Department of Petroleum Resources falls on the Finance and Accounting Division of the Department. How does this division work and what are the internal and external laws and regulations that guide it? You'll get to know after our usual tidbits in the oil and gas industry in a bit. I'm Suleiman Aled and welcome to today's show. The importance of ensuring safety in the Nigeria's oil and gas industry again came to the fore as the Department of Petroleum Resources at Berkuta Field Office commemorated its first anniversary recently. The event was marked with an annual general meeting, an exhibition with the theme, Safety is a Collective Responsibility. DPR Berkuta has truly justified its establishment. Director of DPR, Mr. Modica Ladan, represented at the occasion by DPR Zonal Operations Controller, Meiduguri Alhaji Idris Ali, said the event provided an auspicious avenue for DPR to interact with marketers for mutual benefits, while the Operations Controller, DPR Abekta Field Office, Mrs. Muinat Bilozagi, said the introduction of minimum industry safety training for downstream sector as part of initiatives to improve safety of lives and property in the downstream sector of Nigerian petroleum industry was noteworthy. The event was well attended by top DPR executives, some of whom were ably represented, as well as representatives of major marketers, the Ogun State Government and other government parastatals, top media executives, representatives of the Nigeria Police and other security and safety agencies, as well as other stakeholders were not left out. DPR Abekuta Field Office covers the entire Ogun State in terms of ensuring product availability and enforcing the standards. In a related development, the Department of Petroleum Resources, Port Harcourt in River State, has also held its AGM in the frontline city with an impressive turnout of stakeholders. A special review meeting on the Economic Recovery Growth Plan, ERGP, the federal government's medium-term economic blueprint designed to pull Nigeria out of recession and stimulate growth has held at the Lagos headquarters of the Department of Petroleum Resources. The meeting, which had a special guest, the senior special assistant to the president on ERGP implementation, Mr. Daniel Ikwenobe, was presided over by the outgoing head of planning at DPR, Mrs. Funke Odunuga, and attended by other top and middle management staff of the branch and DPR, representatives of the Minister of Petroleum Resources and the Minister of Budget and National Planning. Ms. Aikwenobe, in a special presentation, praised the DPR culture, which he described as progressive, and gave a graphic overview of the ERGP focus lab set up by the presidency to put together all the initiatives and plans of the document and develop the framework to actualize it. In another presentation, Deputy Director Domestic Gas Obligations at DPR, Mr. Abel Nsa, highlighted how DPR is supporting the ERGP through its oil and gas policy and achieving its ERGP support objectives via its digitalized programs. Mr. Ikwenobe later presented the special progress report on the ERGP focus labs to Mrs. Odunuga. This is a special announcement from the Department of Petroleum Resources. Gas is safe. Gas cylinders are to be kept outside. If you're buying LPG cylinder, look for NIS number on the cylinder. Exchange of gas cylinders with retailers during purchase is best practice instead of refilling from another cylinder. Buy gas from certified LPG plant. Repairing faulty gas cylinders is unsafe. For more information, visit the nearest DPR office or our website www.dpr.gov.ng. Accounting, some financial gurus say, is the soul of any establishment, so also is finance. They both work together to achieve strategic financial decisions in any establishment, but maintain transparency. 
The Finance and Accounting Division of the Department of Petroleum Resources is no exception. A special report on finance accounting has much to tell you. Accounting is an organized system of recording, analyzing, summarizing, and reporting financial transactions of an entity. Analysts believe it is the soul and heartbeat of any organization. However, finance and accounting are two separate disciplines that are often lumped together. At a certain level, finance is the science of planning the distribution of business assets. Accounting is the art of the recording and reporting of financial transactions. But more often than not, we group finance and accounting together because they both deal with the administration of business assets. Those who work in the financial department of any business are concerned with the planning and the distribution of the organization's assets, which include coordination of capital investments and debt-backed investments for the purpose of improving the value of the business. Those in finance also plan the exit strategy for investors of the business. However, those who work in the accounting section of any business are primarily concerned with tracking and reporting the financial transactions of that business. Those in the accounting field are responsible for managing the general ledger, cash flow management and collection, recognizing revenue, analyzing profitability, reporting earnings, managing debts and also paying taxes. Broadly speaking, finance revolves around planning future transactions in an establishment, while accounting revolves around reporting past financial transactions. Though finance and accounting are two different entities and their functions require different skills, they both revolve around the management of assets. Therefore, they are grouped together more often than not. In the Department of Petroleum Resources, both work together as a division for the betterment of the institution. Hence, in the Department of Petroleum Resources, Finance and Accounting Division, better known as FAD, is the soul of the department. The division's role is huge and very complex. It receives, takes custody of, and disburses all the approved funds of the Department of Petroleum Resources. It operates all accounts of the department, including the central bank accounts, pays all the staff salaries, allowances, fringe benefits. It also pays all third parties for services rendered. The Finance and Accounts Division of the Department of Petroleum Resources ensure that the department is in compliance with all the accounting standards and ensures compliance with government directives on financial management. For instance, the TSA Executive Order. Other roles of the division include ensuring DPR's compliance with financial regulations and guidelines circulars establishment and maintenance of internal control measures, management of specialized funds and accounts, and maintenance of statutory accounting books and records. The F&A Division also prepares the department's budget, defends it before the National Assembly, and ensures its implementation and monitoring. It deducts and remits taxes to the appropriate authorities and renders financial returns. It also attends to auditors' inquiries, queries, and recommendations on accounts and records of DPR. In addition, it liaises with DPR stakeholders. The Finance and Accounts Division has four branches, which are the Payroll, Treasury, Budget and General Accounts, as well as Outstations Coordination Branches. All of them are headed by assistant directors. Budget branch has its own responsibilities, which include preparation of annual personal budget, allocation of funds and releases, due diligence compliance, budget monitoring and implementation, 
and generation of budget reports. I know there's a section in the Constitution that said you cannot spend, when the budget is not approved, you can only spend 60% of the recurring vote, not the capital vote, in terms of paying salaries and running the office. So based on that is what we ash on, is what we lean on to operate the budget. Also, we have the financial regulation, we have the procurement act, all these are the rules and the regulations and the laws guiding us to implement the budget. Treasury takes responsibility of the central invoice processing, banking operations and reconciliation of accounts. Treasury is the heartbeat, the hub of any activities in non FAD environment, finance and accounts environment, yes, because is uh, it, it has a very very large function. For example, there are you know the treasury department division. Sorry, branch has three units. We have the banking operations unit, we have the reconciliation unit, and we have what we call central invoice processing unit. Now. All payments that need to be captured in DPR as a whole comes to Central Invoicing Processing Unit. This is where the payments are vetted, ensure compliance for financial regulation, and payment vouchers, which is the summary of the payments itself, is issued. And from there, it's pushed to the banking operations where they will now again subject it to vetting. They will now do what we call e-payment mandate, and then the, the payment proper will now be made. And after making the payment vouchers, uh, payment, we have to keep the statutory books, and that is where reconciliation comes. The payroll and advances branch prepares the monthly salaries and allowances payable to staff, processes the staff claims and generation and presentation of staff salary reports. From the first of every month to a particular date of the month, we are open to collect input for the month's salary. And at a particular date, we open the system for implement that coding of the, those inputs that we have collected. This ensures that everybody knows the time you must submit your input for us to be able to process those inputs and pay salary on time. Payroll thrives on integrity, honesty and transparency. There are systems put in place to make sure that or to minimize fraud to the barest minimum. While the general accounts and outstation coordination branch prepares and submits all the statutory statements of accounts to the supervisory authorities, administering of taxes, dealing with outstation matters, and archiving of official documents. Prepare the financial statement of the department. We also prepare monthly trial balance and submit to the Office of the Accountant General. We do interface with the Regulatory authorities, the Office of the Accountant General, they, call me, they send their team of auditors to us to come and audit the department records financially. So we are in charge, we interface with them, we give them what they need. They send, um, the Auditor General also sends his team to us on all the funds given to the department, how we have expended them. So we are in charge of the recording and showing all this to them. However, there are several controls over the operation of the Finance and Accounting Division of the Department of Petroleum Resources. They are internal and external. For the internal controls, they include approval thresholds, segregation of duties, due process structures, tenders committees, budget monitoring and internal audit. For external, the constitution of the country comes first, followed by the Appropriation Act, Financial Regulations Act, Fiscal Responsibility Act, and the Public Procurement Act.
I will now hand you over to Anthony Amusu to continue with a narrative by interviewing the Deputy Director and Head of the Finance and Accounting Division of the Department of Petroleum Resources. Mr. Uluka Ode Fideli Suju is the Deputy Director and Head Finance and Accounts Division of the Department of Petroleum Resources. Mr. Ojo, you are welcome to this segment of the program. Yeah, thank you very much. We would just like to find out from you, when we talk of Finance and Accounts Division in DPR, what is the setup like? What, what, what do you really do within the scheme of things at DPR? Well, our role in um, the department is um, to ensure that the resources, the financial resources that are committed by government to this agency are managed, you know, in line with um, the regulations, in line with best practices, and to ensure that the mandate of the department is um, executed uh, uh, without any hitch. So how, how well would you say you are performing this, your mandate? I think we are doing very well. Because if you look at it, there has not been disruption, disruption to the activities and operations of the DPR. That means uh, at least uh, uh, we are doing well. I'm sure you are with the department everybody likes to cultivate. This is where the money is. Of course <laughs> this, so, is, this is the center of um, activity, really. Yeah. Okay. So how would you say you relate with or interface with third parties like your stakeholders, government, agencies, contractors, and other financial institutions? Yeah, I think we first of all have to define those stakeholders. Our principal is the federal government of Nigeria. And um, uh, there are certain expectations uh, from the department. And um, the Finance and Accounts Division of the department is like a facilitator, you know, of the operations of the department. So uh, we are expected, for instance, to comply with the extant rules that are set from time to time by government to be sure that the resources that are committed to us are well managed, you know. And um, also, we have other stakeholders. We have the tax authorities. Uh, by law, we are supposed to be a tax coll uh, collector, you know, an agent of government for collecting taxes. So if we pay our staff salaries, uh, it is obligatory on us to make deductions. When we pay third parties, contractors, people who provide service to the department, we are also, uh, it is, it is, we are duty bound, you know, to also deduct taxes and to remit it promptly to the appropriate tax authorities. And um, as for other uh, stakeholders that come Maybe in from financial time to time, institutions, financial institutions, before the advent of the TSA, we used to relate with bankers, commercial bankers, but that is no longer there because we are expected to comply absolutely with the TSA policy of government, and that the department has done. Okay. So what would you say is the core value on which uh, finance and um, account division of the DPR thrive on? Well, we thrive on um, one of the core mandates or core values of DPR uh, has to do with integrity, with accountability, and then uh, with professionalism. So those, for me, are the core values that um, uh, we admonish so much in the department, and that we have been trying to uh, enforce. Okay, since DPR is the regulator in the oil and gas industry, how, in what way would you say your, your unit is contributing to ensuring that uh, DPR achieves its mandate as the policeman of the oil and gas industry? Well, first of all, we, as the financial arm of the department, we render from time to time uh, reports, you know, advice. We give uh, management advice to the management so that um, uh, 
in our relationship with the various IOCs, at least uh, we are able to maximize the value that uh, government is expecting to derive from the operations of these IOCs in the oil and gas industry. I'm sure you, you, your department will be sitting over a huge amount of money. Well, that is the belief generally, <laughs> but uh, I say we have barely enough. But um, uh, because of the expansion of the operations and the expectations of uh, the public and um, the government from the department, you will see that there is no amount that is committed to this department that is actually too much. We are daily expanding our operations. And it takes a lot of money to be able to run our mandates. You know, we are now established in at least 31 states of the Federation. And that's a lot of running costs on the department. And because we are in the oil and gas industry, this is a capital intensive industry. And we must have to invest on some capital projects. Because if we do not do that, it will be like um, Penny wise pounds foolish. We'll be depending on the people that we are on, the organizations that we are supervising. And that will not be in the best interest of the country. I would just want to find out that um, in carrying out this core mandate of uh, that, and then what you say government expects of you, what challenges do you have to contend with in meeting the demands from government? And then, of course, you mentioned the issue of that. This, and we know that this is a highly capital-intensive industry. And then they need to be on their toes getting equipment, getting technology as it comes out. What challenges do you have trying to meet the demands coming from all sectors? The department is expanding. The funding of the department remains static. You know, we're expanding and we don't have uh, resources, you know, that is... Uh, you know, expanding at the same rate. And uh, again, it's important to know that because of the nature of the operations of the department, we are the regulator of the oil and gas industry. We monitor all the retail outlets in the country. We are still very much short-staffed. Of course, the department embarked on a recent recruitment exercise but it has only barely augmented what we have on ground. Because by the time you look at the whole network, you know, of offices that we have, and the retail outlets and um, all the other facilities that the department must monitor, you see that we are still understaffed. So how do you relate with your field offices? Are they kind of independent or they have to come to you for all their financial requirements or within the various uh, the, uh, fields where you have offices, there are some people on ground to tend to their own financial Okay, the way we are structured meanwhile is that we have what we call zonal offices. Zonal offices are our bigger outstations. Then we also have the field offices. The field offices report to the zonal offices. You know, in the wisdom of the Accountant General of the Federation, he has said that government policy for now is that accounts that can be held in the various branches of government agencies will be limited uh, maybe to the zonal offices. And so that is the way it is with the PR. I, I want to ask you, will I say a personal question now? Let's assume that you have uh, demands from four or five units that are very pressing, very important. Mm. What criteria will you use? And like you said, the resources are never enough. So how do you now determine who to service first and who comes next? The most important thing, consideration there, will be the relevance to the core mandate of the department. In other words, we prioritize. Is it you, you that say, will do that or the departments that are bringing in these requests? It is not the department. I will have to do that in, in um, conjunction mm, with the accounting officer, who is the director of the Department of Petroleum Resources, 
who's ruling on the matter, uh, you know, uh, will be the final after he must have been advised, you know, professionally. And then that's not to say that we will not uh, allow the various divisions that are making those demands, you know, to have an input into the decision. But the, the, the director being the accounting officer and who knows the relevance of each request to the overall mandate of the department will finally uh, make a selection. Do we, have you had cause to um, um, placate some of your colleagues who maybe because they didn't get what they wanted at the time they wanted it? Have you had it issues like that? That is just normal. You see, when you are sitting in this position, there is no way, just like I said, and you have also uh, agreed, there is no organization that has all its resources. Mm? So all we have to do within the available, the constraint of available resources is to ensure that the mandate of the organization, the core values of the organization, do not suffer in any way. And um, that is what we do. And um, oftentimes our colleagues understand mm -hmm. okay. that this is for the overall interest of the department. Thank you very much, Mr. Olukayo De Fidelis Ujo, Deputy Director and Head Finance and Accounts Division of DPR. We want to thank you for your time, for explaining what you do in your department, just at least the overall functions of DPR. Thank you so much, sir, for your time. Yeah, thank you for having me. It's that point again where we break, but to return next week. Please join me again next week on the same station on the same channel. For more interesting expose on the Department of Petroleum Resources, see you then. Bye-bye.